Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at multimap in C++. Uh, so, multimaps let you store um, values with duplicate keys. And if you think you use, you need to use a multi multimap, often you don't. Often it's better to use, for example, um, a map of uh, some custom type that you've declared, or let's say a map of vectors or something. Um, so uh, it's, it's not good to immediately jump to using a multi-map, but sometimes you do need it. Let's uh, include that we, we just include the standard map header here. We've got using namespace standard. And I can declare a multi-map in much the same way that I declared a map. So I can say multi-map is going to be the type now. That's declared in the, in the map header. And let's keep it simple. Let's have a map that contains ints as the keys and strings as the value and we'll call it lookup. Now multimap doesn't have an overloaded array subscript type operator, so to add values we need to use the insert method which we saw previously and we need to, as we saw previously, we need to insert pairs of values and we can create those using the make pair function. Um, so, whoops, yeah, let's, let's add in here uh, a value like 30 for the key and we'll add a name for the value Let's add three more of those, so one, two, three. I'm, I'm going to deliberately put the keys in a mixed up order here um, so that you can see that Multimap strictly orders its keys just like a normal map does. Let's have a bunch of different names here, Vicky, Raj and uh, Bob. Um, so to, to iterate through this map, it's just the same as iterating through a normal map, so we can say four. Uh, we, need, we need to get the type of the iterator using the type of the map here. So um, iterator it equals lookup dot begin and we use our particular map to get the starting point for the iterator. We keep going as long as the iterator is not equal to uh, the end of the map in, which is uh, an iterator that actually points off the end of the map so we don't want to use that. And then we increment the iterator, and just as before, we can use uh, let's let's do a C out and say it arrow first. We'll have some punctuation in there, and we'll say it arrow second and endler. So if, if we run this, um, it's gonna work just as before, except that I need to put in another put to operator there. Let's build this and run it. So the only difference is, at the moment, apart from having to use insert, the only difference with a normal map is that we've got duplicate keys in there, whereas a normal map, if we'd added Raj with the same key as Mike, the string value would have overwritten the value for this key. Uh, but here, it happily stores values with the same key. We can use find to find a value in a map, just as we did before. Let, let's just um, do that quickly. So um, let's say here, well, we could use a for loop and we can say we need, again, we need an iterator here. Let's copy this. Equals lookup dot find. And let's, let's find, for example, um, the key uh, 10. And let's, let's keep going while the iterator is not equal to um, look up dot end and say iterator plus plus. So typically you use find to check if a value is in a map. Uh, if, if you do what I'm about to do here, you, you don't get the results that you might perhaps expect because you might think, well, we've got multiple values in the map uh, for any given key or potentially we have. So you might think, okay, I'll, I'll use find to identify those values. But the problem is, of course, that if you, if you do that, yes, you'll get an iterator. Find will return you an iterator to the first value. Let's just put a new line in here. But then you'll keep going to the end of the map. So find is, is really only useful for finding um, finding that just like one value in a map, checking if it's in there or not. Let's try a different key like uh, 20. So if, if I run this now, then we find that the first value it's found is 20, 
and then we're keeping going here till we reach the end of the map so we're going to output all the other elements in the map so the question is how do you get a range of elements in a map and to do that we need to use a function called equal range a method which returns a pair of iterators to the start and the end of the range so we're going to need this iterator type as well because we're going to be creating a pair of those let's output a new line again here and let's create a pair we've seen this pair type in a previous tutorial and it's what make pair is actually creating so here we're going to have a pair of iterators so the type is going to be like this they're both going to be iterators to this type of multimap We'll call it its and we'll set it equal to lookup dot equal underscore range. And uh, we're going to pass the range of values that we want to find there. We're, we're going to pass the key that we want to find. Uh, let's, for example, pass 30 because we've got two values with that key. Maybe I could expand this. Now we can iterate from one iterator to the other. So the, these pair are going to be stored in its.first and its.second. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'll, I'll use this loop to save me a bit of typing. But we're going to change it. Instead of setting the iterator to lookup.find or lookup.begin, we're going to set it equal to its.first. And we're going to keep going until it equals its.end, rather until it yeah, when it equals its dot n, we're going to stop. We don't want to output, um, sorry, its dot second. We don't want to output the end of the range um, because that's off the end of the map. So the, the, the first of the pairs in this iterator its points to the, it gives us an iterator to the start of the range. The second value in this pair, uh, this second iterator, will give us an iterator that's off the end of the map. And that's why we stop um, if we find that our iterator has incremented all the way to um, the second iterator, which, which is kind of like, it's kind of similar to lookup.end. It goes off the end of the range that you're looking at. Let's format that automatically here. Um, so I'm not sure why my auto format's not formatting this. Possibly I've got something wrong in here. Um, because usually the auto format works fine. Let's try building it and see if we get an error. So I'm going to build this project and see what happens. No, it's fine. So just a quirk of the formatter. Let's run this now. And we see here that we've got, we've iterated through those two values that have key 30. If we pass uh, 20, we're only going to have one value um, in this range. So here we've just got Bob. So that's how you can iterate, iterate through a range of keys in the multi-map. Now, um, at the moment, it's 2014, and there's still a lot of C++ 98 code around, from what I can see. And for that reason, we're concentrating on C++ 98 so far. We're going to have a special section on C++ 11 later on. C++ 11 is backwards compatible with C++ 98, but it adds new features. Uh, and one feature that I want to show you here, even though we're not in the C++11 section yet, is um, I, I want to show you a feature which massively simplifies this code. So let's just copy all this and paste it in again. Now here we had to declare a massive type string, uh, but in C++11 you can simply use the keyword auto, which automatically gets the type for you, which of course makes this look, look a lot nicer and a lot simpler. So if I build this, let's build it, we'll probably get a warning that we're using um, uh, C++11 syntax. So in fact, um, we've got some actual error there. Oh yes, that's because I've redefined its. Let's call this its2. And I'm going to change this to its2 and this to its2. Okay, let's save this and build it again. So we've got a warning, and I'm going to show you how to get rid of this warning about C++ extensions in the in the next uh, in this section on C++11. If this doesn't work with your compiler, it may be that your compiler is is not um, it's not enabled for C++11. You might have to specify a new flag uh, to the compile, or it's possible you might even need a, a newer compiler. But you'll ha you'll have to Google for documentation on your compiler for that if you find that this doesn't work. 
Um, but this, this is the first taste of C++11, and as you can see, it enables us to do away with all of this stuff. And if we run this now, then we get the same results as before. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, I, I won't give you uh, like an extended exercise for this, but it, it's really worthwhile just typing this all out for yourself, getting it all working. Check that you, c you can figure out how to get ranges from your map, because if you get bugs there, that's, that's really an opportunity to figure out where your understanding is deficient. Uh, so it's really good if you can try to do this from memory or try to get to the point where you can do it from memory. At the very least, if, if you want this to kind of stick in your mind, it's really, really useful to at least type out this code and get it working. Even better if you can get to the point of doing it from memory. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Until next time, happy coding.